Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for tuning back in. Today's Friday, so Attic Fine Friday. I'm always very excited about Attic Fine Fridays. Uh, I took today off from work. I'm going to take my son. My son's home from college all week. I'm going to take him to see the matinee of Scream 6 opening day. Very excited about that. We're big horror movie buffs. Uh, before I get started on the Attic Find Friday, I added this to my PC of Donruss Diamond Kings from 1982 to 96, Dale Murphy <clears throat> from 1983, and this goes in my GOAT autograph collection, Simone Biles. Not her rookie, but it was unbelievably cheap for this, already slabbed, and this is my first blue label. PSA. I'm not a fan of the blue label, but I couldn't pass it up at the price, so easy add to my PC. So today's attic find is the Yahtzee box find, which is so much fun. It's, it's a little different. This is a candy, uh, candy card collection instead of the normal tobacco card collection that we hear all, all about. Uh, this is exclusively candy cards came with candy, candy bars, things like that, back in the early 20th century. Uh, it seems like the the kid who collected them probably was just too young for tobacco, and maybe his parents didn't smoke, so he got candy bars that came with cards, and he was a big collector. So this, like a lot of these things, was discovered in early 2020. Everybody's home, they're bored, they're, they're not doing much. And so they start digging through their attic and their closets and things. So this man who brought it to auction in 2020, his great grandfather had collected these back in the early 1900s. And as his health was failing later on, many decades later, his son, the, the finder's grandfather, had taken good care of him and he was the, the great grandfather's favorite. So the great grandfather left his son a Yahtzee box filled with old candy cards from the early 20th century. And that grandfather then passed them down to his grandson, the person who found them or, or brought them to auction. And the grandson kind of knew that they had some value to them, but it wasn't until years after they were handed down to him, 15 years after they were handed down to him, that he started looking through them and Googling them and trying to figure out. And he said, wow, these are pretty scarce and decided to bring them to auction. So what was in this find? You've got 1914 E224 Texas Tommy cards, and there were eight of them in this find. Um, the f there's a, a Ty Cobb, it's the first Ty Cobb Texas Tommy card ever graded between Ty, uh, SGC or PSA, and a Shoeless Joe, which is the second greatest between PSA and SGC. So. Talk about how rare they are. The Shoeless Joe graded a PSA 2.5. The Ty Cobb graded a 1. These ones were really difficult to keep in good condition because they came in candy bars. They were stuffed into wrappers or they came in, in other candy type packages. And there were kids who were playing with them. So you had a, a double whammy of tight packaging and kids playing with them. So not very easy to find in good condition. In fact, on the PSA Pop Report of the Type 1s, which will talk about in a moment, the highest is a four. And that four is a shoe, the other shoeless Joe that's been graded. And it's never been brought out publicly. Nobody knows who owns it. It's never been sold at auction. So it's, it's a bit of a mystery. The front of these cards had uh, sepia toned photos. The backs of the type ones had biographical information. It also showed the number of games they played each year, as well as their batting average and their fielding percentage. So back when apparently people thought fielding percentage was ultra important, really interesting. Uh, the other, so there were about 50, I get conflicting information depending on the source. And uh, so also my sources here are Sports Collectors Daily and Sports Collectors Digest. Both, I pulled great information from both of them. There are about 50 type ones in the checklist and there are about 15 type twos in the checklist. It's unclear exactly how many there are, probably because not all of them have been found. It's, it's really quite interesting. So Texas Tommy and the cards were produced by Cardinet Company or Cardinet maybe, uh, candy company in Oakland, California, back in the early 20th century. 
Texas Tommy was the candy bar. I couldn't find any pictures of Texas Tommy candy bars or even the wrappers, but I did find the Baffle Bar, which is an awesome name, Baffle Bar, created by the same company, Cardinet Company in the Bay Area. Uh, Texas Tommy candy bars were named after a popular swing style dance. It was popular in the San Francisco area back then. Texas Tommy, uh, as I said, they were distributed in candy bars or with candy bars. They only had regional distribution, so all of the ones that have been found in the Pop Report have been from the Bay Area in California. The Type 2s, if I didn't already say this, had blank backs. So unlike the, the Type 1s, which had more information on the back, including statistics, before the find, only 75 examples have been graded by PSA or SGC combined. Uh, like two-thirds to three-quarters of those were graded by PSA at the time. Eight of them from this find, so more than 10% came from this find. There was also a Walter Johnson PSA 1 that came from this find. That one sold for $10,000. The Shoeless Joe sold for $128,000. And the Cobb sold for $141,000. The consigner is anonymous, also from the Bay Area, where his grandfather passed them down to him. The grandfather was a World War II vet who passed away around 2005 or so. Store, he stored the Yahtzee box filled with the cards in his closet for in a dark corner of his closet for years and years and years, decades really. Um, the great grandfather built this collection himself from scratch as a child. Uh, the collection actually ends in the late 1920s, so it goes for 15 or 20 years. Ends in the late 20s, 1920s, and they speculated either he grew out of it, like a lot of us did, like I did in the 1990s, or it was the Great Depression, couldn't afford candy anymore. Uh, the Depression, of course, encompassed the late 20s, early 30s. There were also a bunch of cards in the Zenut card series. Um, so Zenut was another candy bar from 1911 to 1929, and they did a Pacific Coast League release of the cards and the only local stars at that time were in the Pacific Coast League so the majority in the collection comes from cards in the popular Zenut PCL series beginning in 1911. There was, those were made by California's Collins McCarthy Company. The candy, the Zenut candy was made of popcorn, peanuts, and coconut similar to Cracker Jack. Ultimately this collector's sweet tooth led him to the 1922 E 121 American Caramel set. He had the Babe Ruth in a PSA 1.5, which sold for $3,300. And he had the Ty Cobb in a PSA 3 that sold for $2,000. Just an awesome, awesome collection. And there were also 53 1909 E74 silks, including Chief Bender. And the entire collection sold for $317,000. So pretty cool stuff. If you're new here, I do a weekly Attic Find Friday. Click that subscribe button. I think you'll really enjoy this. And then I do mostly sports cards uh, content almost every single day. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about this? What would you do if you realized you had a Yahtzee box in your closet filled with what could be very valuable cards? Would you sell them? Would you keep any of them? Would you keep less valuable ones, more valuable ones? Would you pass them down? I'm really curious. I love this stuff. And I love all the ideas you guys put into comments here. That's it. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with more video. And then again on Sunday. I'm here all weekend, guys. I really appreciate you guys watching. Have a great weekend.